हेलो हेलो सर हाँ हेलो वेलकम सर हेलो हेलो सर हाँ हेलो गुड इवनिंग सर दिस इज डॉक्टर कटक दौंड there is some problem with the audio is this okay i am audible hello just hold on i'll, I'll connect with the bluetooth sir yes, there is some problem आता फोन ना करो फोन ना करो हेलो हाँ हेलो सर हेलो हेलो यू आर ऑडिबल सर हेलो हेलो हाँ हेलो हेलो हाँ हेलो हेलो सर आवाज इतना है तुम सर माझा अजिबात येत नाहीये का हॅलो हॅलो हा हॅलो तुमच्यासारखी आवाज क्लिअर आहे हा गुलाने सर आय कॅन लिसन यू युअर व्हॉइस इज क्लिअर प्रियंका आय एम आय ऑडिबल येस यु आर ऑडिबल इवन डॉक्टर पवन येतो का तुम्हाला येस येस डेफिनेटली कॅन यू हियर मी सर Pawan Hello? sir, I think there is some problem from uh, Pawan sir's side. Hello. Priyanka, uh, there are only just nine participants. We will wait till uh, next fifteen minutes or ten minutes maybe. Yes. Or 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 shall we start? Yes, we can start, but just. Uh, no, no, leave. Karun, but this guy is doing. Only, only, only nine participants are there. they will join they will join we will okay, wait for okay. 3 minutes more and we will start till that let uh, just confirm about regarding uh, any uh, audio, um, audio problem from pawan sir sides okay 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 i think just now he left ha ah, he is maybe, rejoining uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah some maybe some may, maybe sir, some sir. yeah maybe some problem with his audio visual yeah thing. just he joined okay yeah. we will see डॉक्टर आदिति डॉक्टर आदिति हां हां जी डॉक्टर जस्ट पुट वन मैसेज दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड ओके ओके मैम ये हो गया हो गया हो गया हेलो हां यू आर ऑडिबल सर यस 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 फाइनली फाइनली यस देयर वाज देयर वाज सम प्रॉब्लम विद द ऑडियो ओके हम नाउ यू कैन स्टार्ट Shailendra sir yeah yeah shall we start yeah better they will join yes, sir, please, please. Uh, uh, hello good evening to all i would like to welcome all of you in our second uh, web series on the vaginal hysterectomy especially especially on ndvh i would like to welcome our guest dr pawan gulani he is very efficient and eminent Uh, laparoscopic vaginal and obstetric surgeon in last in last two uh, webinars 
we had seen his knowledge his deep knowledge about anatomy about the physiology and his surgical excellence so i would so i would like to welcome dr pawan gulane sir please sir go ahead and start with your lecture i am expecting yes hold on sir i am just or hello you please unmute yourself okay 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 i would like to i would i would like to hand over the mic to dr pawan gulane sir gulane sir please proceed yes sir yes sir i uh, am i audible yes sir yes sir you are audible yes hold on sir just a second dr aditi make everyone muted okay ma'am okay there is some problem just take a minute sir just a second so today uh, hello everyone Hello, sir. Please proceed. Please there is there, there are a lot of disturbance in the noise actually. I don't know why. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible completely. No problem. Hello. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, sir? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So, hello, everyone. I am Dr. Pavan Gulane. As we all know, we have uh, this is our second session, and uh, I thought this time I will talk about uh, our next level. I am going to talk about the vaginal hysterectomy in the previous cesarean section. Okay. Uh, we all know. nowadays the number of the cesarean sections uh, my screen is visible right uh, can i uh, well, do you uh, no sir uh, your screen is not visible your screen is not visible screen is i am sharing my screen now okay okay yes now ah, is yes. it visible yes 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 okay so yes so nowadays we know we have been doing vaginal hysterectomy for for long long period of time and we all know being the gynecologist we know the anatomy of the uh, uterus we know the anatomy of the structures around the uterus but with the uh, with the presence of this new era of patient pouring in with the vaginal uh, with the previous cesarean section we all know there are different reasons for having a, a patient undergoing for cesarean sections uh, i am not going to go into details of that but there has been the who is saying that there has been a increase in incidence of cesarean section specifically in third world countries and india is one of them we have jumped from 10 to 12% of cesarean section that used to happen previously to around 30 35% of the cesarean section that means around patient who are undergoing uh, who is uh, who is been undergoing uh, hysterectomy right now we are going to have patients around say 12 15% because they have they have been undergone that many percentage of the patient has undergone cesarean section previously but now era is going to come these patient who are we are operating right now uh, for cesarean section they are going to come up with the 
uh, for, for the complaints of BUB, fibroids, and multiple reasons for hysterectomies. And that time, we will be operating at least 50% of the patient of previous cesarean section. There can be previous one cesarean section, previous two cesarean section, or previous three and previous four also. Now we have started operating. So we have to know and address this issue of vaginal hysterectomy in previous cesarean sections. Okay. So the question arises: Why? Why do we need to know? Okay. For the obvious reasons, we are gynecologists. And we are we cannot stop doing hysterectomies. That is the uh, many people say bread and butter, but for me it is going to be a a, a tool to rescue our patients from their ailments. So we need to know uh, to know how to do vaginal hysterectomies for all these challenging procedures. Uh, we need to know the basic anatomy. We need to know the how. And what changes we have to do while performing the vaginal hysterectomy in previous cesarean section patients? And uh, one reason is it is one of the most challenging procedures. See, we all do uh, uh, routine vaginal hysterectomy where we find nicely the planes. We are going to find the uterus that is nicely mobile, sometimes less mobile. But when you see the uh, when you see a patient with cesarean section, you expect adhesion. You expect Restricted mobility in this patient. So, mastering this uh, uh, procedure, particularly that is the vaginal uh, hysterectomy in previous cesarean section, is going to be more challenging. This procedure is going to require more skills, more time to learn the uh, the techniques in operating in this procedure. Now, as I already told you, the incidences of the cesarean section is rising. So, we are going to get patients very soon with previous cesarean section, practically. Uh, as I told you, more than 50% of the patients who are who will be getting operated for hysterectomy will be the previous cesarean section, and obviously not all the patients are going to go for laparoscopy. So there are going to be patients who are poor. There are multiple reasons uh, for uh, for them to opt for the vaginal hysterectomy, and that's why we have to know to operate these patients. So laparoscopy is the best approach. As I have already told you in the last uh, session, also the laparoscopy is going to be the mainstay. But you need to know the conventional surgery. And why do we need to know conventional surgery? Because not all the times there are there are going to be troubleshootings in laparoscopy. You are going to have your light source knocked off. Your camera sometimes will not work. There is a possibility that patient patient's anesthesia point of view patient is not going to be fit for laparoscopy. There is going to be a, a point of time when. You probably the person who is uh, the best with the camera will not be available. So the list is endless where laparoscopy can fail, and in that particular uh, uh, particular scenario, we need to know the conventional surgeries. So rather than doing the laparotomy for the patient, we can offer lap, uh, vaginal hysterectomy, which is less invasive as compared to laparotomy. So that's why even though laparoscopy is a good option, we have to know the. Vaginal hysterectomy in such patients. Patients. One more thing is, uh, see, we all believe that we have to service the serve the humanity. We have to do n number of things to the patients. But we are also human beings, and for us also, the profitability is going to make a difference. So, if some patient who is not very affording, who uh, probably will not be able to sustain the charges of laparoscopy, probably. Uh, The anesthesia that is required for the laparoscopy, general anesthesia, it is very expensive, more expensive, and also in the remote places where you don't have expert anesthetists to give your uh, general anesthesia to probably uh, uh, counter the changes of the pneumoperitoneum that happens. So in those cases, you definitely can offer these patients a vaginal hysterectomy because you require lesser medicine, you require lesser anesthesia. you require lesser exposure of the abdomen so lesser sutures are required there are list is endless in this uh, also because what i believe if you do vaginal hysterectomy the charges of the medicine that is going to be there and you do laparoscopic hysterectomy charges of the medicine that is going to be there is far more different we all will agree that it is for laparoscopy you might require charge, uh, medicine of three times the cost of vaginal hysterectomy so it is a cheaper option so you can offer this to your patients
so after knowing why do we need to know now the question is what do we need to know we what knowing uh, vaginal hysterectomy for previous cesarean section means what exactly modification that we have to make to come out safely for the patient also and for yourself also so what challenges you are going to have you are going to have restricted space first of all if your patient is paras uh, who has delivered one two three uh, babies vaginally you can you know the introit is, go, is going to be wide vagina is going to be uh, patchulous where you can just go in put the large speculum inside and you have humongous amount of the vision you can see everything from there you understand but when you have a cesarean previous cesarean section patient your introitus is going to be very small you can hardly put number 2 speculum inside and see the cervix so the restriction of the space is a major concern when you are attempting the previous cesarean section patients we have seen many uh, uh, colleagues who are who are telling me why why do you offer the vaginal hysterectomy directly go for laparoscopy waha pe to koi jagah nahi rehta hai how can you put the speculum how can you see a uh, uh, fibroid uh, uterus patient uh, fibroid uteruses how can you mercellate those uteruses there are hardly any space so this is one concern major concern for many of us is the restriction of the space where you are not going to have any space to put your speculum inside and see so that is one then a restriction of the mobility so you when you have a patient who has undergone normal delivery the ligaments are going to be stretched so you are going to have some distance i am i am not going to i am not talking about the patients who are having prolapse i am talking about non descent vaginal hysterectomy and the patient with the normal delivery even if they don't have prolapse you are going to have grade 1 mobility grade 1 mobility means the normal level of the cervix is going to be at the ischial spine you are going to have a descent of the cervix that can come below the cervical uh, be below the cervical uh, ischial spine but above the introitus so that is considered as a normal mobility in the normal patient who has undergone normal delivery but in the patient who has not undergone normal delivery in the patient who has undergone cesarean section there is going to be a some form of scarring in the pelvis and this scarring it can be at the level of the bladder it can be at the level of the uterus getting adherent to the entry abdominal wall you are going to have generalized adhesions because of some uh, subclinical peritonitis or whatever must have happened because of the cesarean section they, that is going to cause restriction that is going to hold the uterus inside the abdomen and will not let let it come out so the mobility is going to be a challenge when you are operating the previous cesarean section there is going there are going to be adhesions so the adhesions obviously if you have any surgical intervention the body's natural response is to form a barrier that will prevent any form of inflammation from spreading to other areas of the abdomen so this barrier in uh, uh, repercussion will give rise to scarring the scarring is called adhesion this adhesion can be at multiple levels if you are fortunate the adhesion can be at the level of bladder only but nowadays we have seen the patient with adhesion that is ranging from bladder and tri abdominal wall posteriorly even the pouch of douglas is uh, obliterated because we have the habit of using the mop and uh, uh, probably mopping the entire area of the uterus with the help of mop that is going to cause micro traumas and it will increase the chances of adhesion so adhesion is again going to change the anatomy and finding the planes inside the abdomen will become more difficult when you have adhesion okay the next point immediately comes change in anatomy so what kind of change in anatomy we do do we expect we do expect elongation of the cervix because i have seen few patients who have undergone cesarean section they had a uh, ventrophic uterus where the fundus of the uterus is stuck at the level of the umbilicus and patient cervix is in the uh, in the vaginal area so while uh what do you say uh, sub involution of the uterus after cesarean section or after delivery the uterus is stuck there in the in the in the top of the abdomen and cervix is going getting pulled down so it is ultimately going to cause uh, elongation of the cervix you are going to have uh, a, a change in the fallopian tube axis because of the adhesion in the anterior abdominal wall you are going to have uh, uh 
sometimes you you have adhesions at the top of the fundus so entire uterine wall or uterine uh, structure is elongated over like a tube elongated uh, right from the uh, uh, you can say cervix to the anterior abdominal wall so these changes are the, the changes of the anatomy are going to be there and you have to address it why do we need to uh, why do we need to see the changes and address it the only reason that we have is save the normal structures like bladder ureter and rectum these are the only three structures you are, you are going to have problem when you are having uh, uh, anatomical changes or adhesions in the pelvis and also sometimes some uh, sigmoid colon or ileum or uh, uh, these kind of even appendix can come and get adherent to the uh, cornu of the uterus because of the previous cesarean section and uh, how to identify and uh, repair the bladder injury this is one of the major thing that you need to know this is one of the important thing because if you know how to identify the bladder injury and repair it then obviously your confidence is going to increase your your my teacher always used to tell me once you injure a bladder you will and repair it you will your chances of injuring the bladder again in the next similar case is going to reduce because you know where you have injured it okay if you injure the ureter there is a possibility next time you are going to be more precautious and you are going to prevent injuring it so you need to identify how to uh, how to uh, recognize whether you have injured the bladder or not okay so to address the first step that you all had was the restriction in the space okay so this is these are the few uh, uh, very small small uh, images i have made obviously i don't know how much uh, Uh, aesthetic they are, but obviously they are going to solve the purpose of making them. Okay. Yes. So this is the introit, as you can see. Can you recognize? This is the labia that is there, and this uh, uh, what is the maroon color is the labia. You can see the urethra at the top. You can see the vagina that looks pink, and uh, lower down you see one more round that is anal canal. i hope everybody can uh, understand what i am trying to explain yes 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 okay so this is going to be a normal introitus okay and the above spot and, is clitoris sorry and the above spot is clitoris no that is urethra ah okay and the, the above is, that okay you have to put there one spot i am i am not we are not considering clitoris at all okay 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 so yep. right now what we see is the introitus normal introitus and in the previous cesarean section we all know or in the patient who are nulli gravida we all know the introitus is very tight the the reason is levator have not been stretched in that case so putting the speculum inside and seeing sometimes it becomes very difficult to even put a uh, two finger inside i hope everybody must have uh, uh, experienced this situation so what what is the solution for this we cannot say that we have to do because when you have restricted access or restricted restricted uh, vision your probability of injuring the structure That's inside structure. like bladder ureter and rectum is going to be multifold so what is the solution if we all know anatomically the lower one third of the vagina is covered with the levator ani and upper two third of the vagina is actually a muscular tube only so it is a distant distensible portion so what we need to do to increase the uh, uh, increase the access or we can say the the uh, area to put the speculum we can just give a simple incision at 6 o'clock position which is called shudart incision okay this shudart incision has to run lower one third of the vagina the fascet and up to the mid to the anal canal you cannot go uh, really close to the anal canal but even if you give this much incision it is going to widen the area you can see this black uh, thing that is there 
you just increase this incision down it is just like a midline episiotomy okay if you include but in the the idea is you have to include the vagina it cannot be just on the perineum you have to include lower one third of the vagina fochet and the uh, and the perineum or the skin between the fochet and the anal canal this will increase the space by double if you are if you are uh, uh, if you are Intraoral is four centimeter. It is going to increase it to eight centimeters, and believe me, even one centimeter increase in the intraoral diameter is going to be very much helpful in doing vaginal hysterectomy in previous cesarean sections. So, increasing that much is going to be absolutely uh, fantastic. But the problem with the uh, uh, pseudoaddition cesarean is because this is a non-pregnant uterus, you are going to have more bleeding as compared to the normal episiotomy. So. you have to arrange the bleeding and and try not to cause the vulval hematomas or perineal hematomas and the second problem if you go too deep down towards the anal canal there is a possibility you might injure the external sphincter of the anus anus also so these two things only you have to take care while giving this incision otherwise these incisions are absolutely safe giving also and repairing also this repair of the instrument incision is again just going to be like your normal episiotomy okay so i am going on the next slide uh, one doubt sir can i ask right now or later on i think we can take the doubts at the end okay. ma'am later, later on keep the webinar going on and later on we will take the questions okay, okay. yes so now one okay. problem is solved you have you have created a good amount of space to go inside now we have the next problem that most of the gynecologists have and that is when we do the hysterectomy you are going to invariably face the bladder adhesion you cannot escape this step without this step you cannot proceed for the hysterectomy and uh data says that when you are doing hysterectomy for the previous cesarean section chance of bladder injury is as high as 2% with the expert hands i am not talking about newcomers with the expert hand chances are 2% of bladder injury is going to happen okay so last time i have already explained you about how to open the anterior uh, uh, vaginal wall for the uh, probably for the people who are who uh, were not present at that point of time i am just explain i don't give incision entirely uh, on the cervix uh, that is the curvilinear incision i just give incision from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock and from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock that means the portion of the vagina from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock on one side and 9 uh, sorry 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock from another side is going to be intact it is going to be attached to the cervix okay and after giving an incision i hold the lip of the anterior vaginal wall with the elis lift it up so that you create the space and then dissect the bladder now i am going to exactly explain you what i am going to consider anatomically while doing the bladder dissection i hope you all can see this uh, this image you can see this yellow structure up that is a bladder you can see this brown structure down that is a cervix okay and you can see the area between them is going to be the area in normal patients is going to be a potential space in normal patient you don't have anything there it is just the opposition between them two and some bladder uh, some bladder fat it is going to be there between cervix and the bladder but because of the previous cesarean section when you dissect the bladder and after delivery and after cesarean section this bladder is going to come back to the place and it will try to uh, try to heal and during the healing process i have as i told you it is going to form a scar okay now if you see this gray area in between this is actually the area middle one fifth of the bladder that is going to rest on the cervix lateral one fifth of the of the bladder is going to be uh, going to be there on the lateral half of the cervix and rest of the bladder is away because bladder is wider as compared to the cervix that is the normal concept okay but as you can see 
this bladder is convex upwards can you see this bladder is convex and cervix is also convex that means it is going to meet only in this gray area in between but the pink area surrounding this gray area does not is not going to have any adhesion and that is because the bladder anyway do not go down i hope everybody is getting this concept if you see the lateral edge of the bladder is away can you see my cursor now can you see my mouse here yes 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 we can can you see it now mouse yes yes uh, yes so if you see this gray portion is going to be opposed to the bladder and this is the only portion that is going to form the bladder adhesion this portion if you see the cervix is curving down and bladder is curving up here so this portion if it is not opposed to the cervix it cannot form the adhesion okay so this is the area we have to target and this exact area is going to be the area of this is exactly going to be the area of uterine arteries uterine artery are going to be at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock position that's why we we say that you have to dissect on the vessel you have to dissect on this vessel to reach this particular area on both the sides once you reach this area which is devoid of any adhesion you can go lateral and find the cervical extent exactly and try to come medially with the sharp dissection that means this is called as lateral window technique and this is exactly your lateral window that is going to lie on the uterine artery you go laterally towards uh, uh, upwards and then when you have identified the cervix you come medially dissecting the bladder away from the cervix and if i tell you the exact area that is going to be adherent to the cervix is less than 2 cm less than 2 cm is on the higher side i am telling you it is generally lesser than that so if you cut the scar observing or taking the reference point of the cervix down you cut the scar you can easily dissect the bladder up there is no problem at all are you getting this point yes sir okay so now yeah. this is actually the lateral window dr shiri shades window yeah. that is called this is the lateral window and this is the lateral window technique i observe even in the cases of laparoscopy so in the laparoscopy is also i go in this lateral window and then dissect the bladder medially so the chances of bladder injury is going to be minimized uh, drastically okay i can't i can't understand sorry hello hello sir you continue please okay fine so now this is another uh, uh, image okay now this is the abdomen obviously i have not drawn this is actually um, these are just the line diagram that i have drawn because i believe understanding with this line diagram is much better than showing you just the video where half of the people probably will not understand where the adhesions are okay so now you see this is the this brown thing is the uterus you see the umbilicus here on the end of the anterior abdominal wall and you see see suppose you have the uterus post delivery the uterus is at the level of the umbilicus right and if this uterus has injury or serous uh, serous burns or uh, uh, some extra mopping microtrauma has happened at the serosa of the anterior wall of the abdomen 
this tiroza is going to get adherent to the anterior abdominal wall you can see this black dot here with that it is going to get adherent because it is going to lie there at least at least for 48 hours and then it will start stinking but what happens when the uterus is exposed of its tiroza or the peritoneum it is going to have the myometrium and uterine myometrium is absolutely it is a smooth muscle cell this myometrium has a high propensity to proliferate when there is a breach in the area covering the myometrium this myometrium grows inside the adhesion and get adherent to the anterior abdominal wall that's why when you see any band of adhesion between the uterus and the abdominal wall you cut it you see absolutely that band gets retracted and that retraction is because that band also obviously it is going to have scar tissue but it also has the myometrium and that band that's why is very strong if you have palpated that band of anterior abdominal wall or ventricular uterus that band is absolutely strong cutting them sometimes you have to use a sharp scissor with very very much difficulty and this is that band that is going to happen here suppose you are trying to uh, dissect this strong band okay this this works exactly like some uh, some strong ligament which is also pulling this uterus and uh, towards the anterior abdominal wall and this patient typically will complain of pain in abdomen while bending down or if they have uh, somebody is touching their belly lower belly or they touch their lower belly they are going to have this typical kind of a pain that happens because of this band is lying there or this uterus is there so this is typical finding that they are going to, or the typical symptom they are going to give you okay now there is one more uh, one more thing that uh, I, i i think you should we all should know this is the uterus obviously uh, not a very good diagram but to understand it is going to be uh, uh, very useful i suppose if you see the uterus the lower part of the uterus or the cervical portion of the uterus is absolutely small you see the cervical span is going to be 2.5 to 3 cm not more than that but if you see the uh, the body of the uterus the body of the uterus is very broad can you see so this uterus is uh, when you pull down because if your cervix is very small the amount of the vault you open is very small you understand to deliver this broad uterus from small small vault is going to be difficult so you need to use some some maneuver to deliver this uterus so after you cut the uterine on both the side what you can do you can see this white line can you see this white line yes this is the white lines are the exact area of incision that you have to give on the uterus to elongate the axis of the uterus what will happen this uterus if you suppose give incision on this uterus like this this uterus will bend like this and will come down are you getting it just look at my hand these are the incision that i have given this is going to be uterus up here and there is going to be uterus up here so once i give this incision this and i pull it down this entire uterus is going to fold on itself and come down so from down your corneal structure are going to be absolutely accessible to you okay okay yes so th this is this is called wedging you just cut it and entire bridge is going to collapse okay now this is a video uh, can i just disconnect and i will align this video first and reconnect the the screen is that okay you will be able to see it better i will just i will just do that just hold on
I hope till now everybody is uh, is getting what I am trying to explain. Yes, I am getting some. Yes, I am ready. Okay. Now, this is one of the video of previous two cesarean section and one normal delivery. This patient had one normal delivery first, and then cesarean section, then cesarean section. Okay. Now, in this particular case, I have already taken down the McEnroth ligament. I have already cut the uterine artery. Okay. And then we realize that there is a band of adhesion that is going to be there, that was there that was extending from the entry wall of the uh, uterus to the entry wall of the abdomen. Okay. And when we are when we are pulling it down, entire entry abdominal wall was sagging down. Right. So I this is a technique where you can deliver this ventrophic uterus from down. Okay. Is it audible? The uh, the is it visible? The screen. Yes, screen is visible, but it is uh, it's not a video actually. It means running on, it's just a screen that has stopped. Right. Okay, fine. Just hold on. <coughs> is it uh, is it visible? The 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 picture of the uterus. Yes. Okay. Yes. I would just like to tell you, you you see the uh, the police catheter there. I'm just trying to add few things yes. because uh, otherwise I will not remember. We generally don't put police catheter in the patient with the previous surgery section or any vaginal hysterectomy before surgery. We put the police catheter after the after surgery. Yeah. There are two reasons for it. One is if you have a police catheter in place before surgery, or if you empty the bladder beforehand, your bladder is going to be absolutely floppy. Hmm. So if you have a floppy bladder, there are more chances that you are injured with the speculum or with your feathers. Okay, but if you have a bladder which is partially filled, your partially filled bladder is going to be taut like this. Yeah. Okay. So the yeah. dissection through the plane is going to be more easy. So having a partially filled bladder is better for me when you are doing when 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 I am doing vaginal hysterectomy. That's why no catheterization or no emptying the bladder before surgery. Secondly, if accidentally I injure the bladder, hmm. then if the bladder is totally empty, it might go unnoticed, and that is not good for the patient. See, injuring the bladder and diagnosing and repairing it is very good. There is no problem. But injuring the bladder, not knowing and not repairing, and patient coming back back later is going to be a problematic to you and patient both. So, uh, don't put the uh, uh, catheter uh, in the patient before surgery. But we will ask why? Why did I put this in this patient? Because this patient had over distended bladder. Whatever reason, patient was taken in the uh, OT uh, almost forty forty minutes before the surgery. She was uh, she was having a uh, full bladder, and while doing the surgery, we were having leak from the urethra. That's why I had, I had catheterized this patient. Okay, so this was this this one small thing that I wanted to convey. Okay. Is it okay the video? Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. We can see it. Okay. So now yeah. the next step is I have just pulled the uterus down, and I am trying to take corneal structure of one of the sides. Okay. Now somebody will say, how is it possible? How can you pull pull down the uterus that is ventrophic? You can pull down the uterus with the ventrophic. Obviously, I am not saying there are few cases where we could not do it. But ninety percent of the time, you can pull the uterus because the patient is in spinal anesthesia and entire abdominal wall is absolutely lax. When you pull down, I told you the band is absolutely uh, tense, so it pulls down the uterine wall down. 
and this is a particular instrument that you see it is a towel clip that we generally use to pull down the uh, the structure where the dose are stuck or stuck or uh, also in the patient with the large fibroid use the towel clip so that the tracking is adequate now you can see immediately the round ligament and the fibroviral ligament is uh, visible okay once you cut it you can just transfix the uh, the corneal structure okay make sure that you have taken both the corneal uh, both the uh, round ligament and the fibroviral ligament and fallopian tube nicely you transfix i think uh, in the last uh, so last uh, session also i told you that i always use two clamps while uh, while taking the corneal structures to prevent slipping of the round ligament uh, slipping of the fallopian tube particularly is it is it not working uh, uh, there is some lag i suppose is it I, i'll do one thing i'll play this uh, video directly on the you can put it on the whatsapp group also if you can or i have a link if if you have I I have the video. I'll just just hold on. I'll just show you on the PC only. That will be better, I suppose, because I wanted I want uh, all of you to see this video. It's very important. This is a come. the let me i'll i'll do one thing i'll just post the video later on in the group so what what i do uh, for uh, for the ventrofix bands is i take a bipolar i think priyanka ma'am must have seen it yeah yes so i take a bipolar i pull entire assembly down the uterus down and with the bipolar i coagulate the band of adhesion and cut it below just keep on doing it you'll realize in no time that band of adhesion is going to go up and because it has it has lot of scar tissue it is it never bleeds believe me and plus we are using bipolar also the chances of bleeding post operatively is like none in my experience i have never faced any problem with the ventrofix uterus that i have used the bipolar and used the caesar i have never faced any post operative bleeding so you can use the bipolar along with the caesar just coagulate coagulate the structure the way we do in laparoscopy and then cut it so immediately that band is going to go away and you can find the another uh, side of the uh, 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 the corneal structures clamp cut and release it and your work is done okay now after surgery after doing all the hysterectomy the, the important step that is going to be there is to check the bladder it is a very important step you cannot miss this step if you feel that you have injured the bladder then check if you feel you have not injured the bladder then check if you feel you are the fantastic surgeon then check if you feel that you are not a very good, not a good surgeon then also check there is no option because the bladder injury in the previous section can happen with the best of best surgeons so always go back just hold the uh, the bladder peritoneum pull it down and you will see the entire area i told you only 2 cm of the area is going to be there on the bladder that is going to be on the cervix that is the only area that you have dissected you just have to see the strip of 2 cm by 4 cm bladder and if you have not injured that portion you are absolutely safe and it's a very simple maneuver you just have to hold the uh, uh, bladder peritoneum pull it down and with the help of speculum you can see entire area of the bladder now what if you have injured it what should we do so if you have injured it you can suture the bladder then and there with the vicryl number 203040 whatever you are comfortable with 
there is no need to open the patient and do the cystotomy and then suture the bladder we have sutured the rent of the bladder as big as 5 cm also from the vaginal end vaginal root and there was no problem patient went home free absolutely fine there was no fistula nothing had happened so the only thing is that you have to identify all the edges and once you close you have to do the methylene blue test and identify any leakage is there your suture has to be water tight and they have to be taken in two layers to decrease the tension on the first layer that is the dictum that has to be followed when you are suturing the bladder okay uh, so the next thing that i want you to see is this uh, uh, last time i had i had told you that we took uh, we take uh, routinely take the safety knot and the safety knot is going to prevent the bleeding from the raw area between two clamps it is going to prevent prevent bleeding that is coming from the subtubal vessel it is going to prevent the bleeding that is going to going to come from the uterine artery so this is a very small demonstration of that safety knot obviously this uh, this procedure that i have uh, showing you is a case of huge prolapse but i think to learn how to take the safety knot is more important than seeing it on the on the endivage patient because in endivage patient what happens your entire ligaments are going to be there the, uh, inside so understanding the safety knot becomes more difficult okay so now this is a uh, these are the pedicles these are the coronal pedicles that i am taking you can see i am transfixing it i always transfix all the all the pedicles without fail okay you can see the bite is going through the uh, the ovarian pedicle and the round ligament just hold on i'll just get get you back you can see this small structure here the suture this is the uterine stump Okay, the trans yeah. And my suture is going to the the another suture is going to go beyond the uterine artery. Understood? Yeah. But the only thing you have to do is the bite that is going to go through the cardinal ligament cannot go lateral because there is going to be the ureter there waiting yes. for you for that bite. So your bite has to go from the exactly same point where you you have taken the first bite while taking the mecanthrop ligament. Okay, and this area. that is going to be there is going to be free you just have to pull that area and take it you can see i'm pulling it down and just holding the stump of the uterine artery and going beneath so this will reduce the chances of ureter by 100% injury by 100% and will increase the chances of taking the uterine artery in the pedicle by 100% since the time in last last three and a half years i'm using this technique we have faced we have reduced the hematoma vault hematoma formation drastically in studies they say the vault hematoma is going to be or ranging from 2 to 7% but in our cases that we do the vault hematoma is 1 in 1000 patients it is very very less so this safety knot is helping us like anything and i want you all to learn this safety knot and use it so that the patient morbidity can be reduced because if you have a vault hematoma that is one problem with the vault hematoma comes the vault abscess that is another problem if you reduce you can if you can reduce any trickle of the blood that is going to be there in the area of the vault there is a possibility that you will reduce the chance of further morbidity to the patient and more complication okay so that's it i suppose uh, we have taken care of everything the the video of the uh, ventricular uterus i am going to share on the group Uh, you can go through it if you have any queries you can ask me on the group also if you have any queries you can ask me right now 
Sir, generally in previous two or previous three LSS, we found that it is completely fibrosed. And when we uh, means uh, struggle to get the plane for the miss bladder pillar, exactly, we can't see properly in that situations. So <clears throat> how to delineate the planes uh, in such situations means how to go through that exact fibrosis and to uh, means to identify the bladder pillars uh, in, in that situation. See, I, I, I have shown you the uh, the image of the bladder on the cervix. And yes. trust me, it is exactly like that, the way I have shown you. Hmm. Exactly, you are going to find the virgin areas of no adhesions, no fibrosis over the uterine at that lateral window. And if you find that lateral window and dissect the adhesions, taking the reference of the cervix at that particular point of time, you will never, never injure the bladder. Okay. And sir, what about the coronal structures? When we go for the salpingectomy, bilateral mm -hmm. salpingectomy, what care we should take at that time? Before the clamping? The section or routine? A routine in the previous LSCS vaginal hysterectomies. Oh, see, it totally depends. Sometimes it's found very difficult, means... Uh, the structures, they are quite uh, adherent and it's not getting down. So the, the chances of uh, tearing or having some bleeding over it's, there are absolutely... I, last time I also told you, taking the fallopian tube is absolutely, in vaginal hysterectomy specifically, is relative. It is not mandatory that you have to take fallopian tube because sometimes the fallopian tube can be adherent to the appendix also, it can be ad yeah. adherent to the cecum also, it can be adherent to the sigmoid colon also. And while taking that fallopian tube, just to prevent minimal risk of forming some malignancy that might happen, you cannot create a fish, uh, you cannot create a bowel injury to the patient. So if your fallopian tube is free, it is mobile and it is going to come down, that time only you have to take the fallopian tube. And otherwise, just for taking the fallopian tube, you cannot risk the patient to do her laparotomy and do rejection anastomosis. Yes. And in such cases, in patients, if she is having the pathology, adin adinexal pathology, so mm -hmm. we should have um, means uh, change the decision either by going for the vaginal hysterectomy, we can put uh, means uh, take her for the laparoscopic hysterectomy. Absolutely. See, laparoscopic hysterectomy, anyway, see, but the, I, the, the thing I did, that I told you, the uh, advantage and disadvantages in that column, I told you that laparoscopic hysterectomy is going to be a better surgery. But mm -hmm. in certain cases where you cannot use laparoscopic injury, laparoscopic surgery, that time only you are going to use the vaginal hysterectomy, right? Yeah. So suppose you don't have a laparoscopy setup. There is a possibility that some surgeon is operating, he does not know laparoscopy. Mm -hmm. So yes. why do you want to take the risk? Obviously, laparoscopy is the, the option. If you have any difficulty, if you think that you have to take the ovarian cyst, you are not able to do it, then put a laparoscope and do it. Okay. Okay. That is going to be the option. There is yes. no there is no there is no doubt about it. But in if, if suppose if I have an option in my center, the patient walks in and she says that she I, we found that there is a ventricle uterus, why would I go for vaginal hysterectomy at first place? Hmm. Understand? Because I already have the option of doing laparoscopy in that patient. Okay. Understood? Yes. Hmm. My first option, even if I do uh, vaginal hysterectomy, in my center, if I precisely tell you, in last four years, I have done three vaginal hysterectomies. Only three vaginal hysterectomies. Yeah. Because my first priority is laparoscopy. Hmm. But in when I do freelancing, I do uh, vaginal hysterectomies also. And I have pretty good, I have done more than say, 12,000 vaginal hysterectomies. So obviously, I I know that till what extent I have to go. Yes. You understand? Yeah, being yeah. a surgeon, being a surgeon, maturity comes when you do, you know where to stop. Yes. Okay. Sir. Not huh. when you know what to do, you have to know what not to do. Definitely. Yes. Absolutely. And sir, uh, you say that uh, when you use a monopolar for us dissecting a plane, hmm. so uh, bipolar, bipolar. Uh, okay, Bi uh, yes, sorry, bipolar. Uh, but shall we use it in the means? Uh, um, uh, should, uh, we should take a care for the ureter also while uh, dissecting the planes in that. No, see the 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 the, the, the main place or the, the place where I am advising you to use the bipolar is 
the band of adhesion that is going to be there on the anterior abdominal wall or fundus. Mm-hmm. Okay. There is no question that ureter is going to come there. What you should be concerned about is suppose patient cuffs at the time when you activate the cautery. You can have a, you can have the ileum that is coming to your cautery. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So you have to be very careful while using the activity in the cautery. Or you can mm. be worried about the bladder. Yeah. But bladder is not going to cause a problem because I will tell you, once you dissect and reach to the area of the um, this adhesion band, bladder is already long gone below your speculum. It is not going to be uh, uh, any anywhere close to your uh, adhesion band that you see. If suppose you are you, you are thinking the bladder is there, that means your bladder adhesion is incomplete. You have to do the bladder adhesion first before attempting the uh, this uh, adhesion band uh, adhesion Okay, okay. Doctor Shailendra, sir, ureter is not going to be there. Ure, ureter is going to be at the level of. I mean, I, I thought uh, if you are ligating or cutting the uh, ligature with that, uh, like means if you are uh, cutting with uh, bipolar itself, then uh, we should uh, have to take that precaution uh, that uh, means it should not bother the ureter. While they. Ah, hello, madam. Ha. If the questions is having from the. Uh, other members, please ask. Or you can, or 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 you can put questions in the question box or the uh, group. We will ask to sir, and we will let you convey. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Hello. Hello. Sir, I I I have seen, or I used to do the lateral window technique in either open as well as in uh, vaginal surgeries. Mm-hmm. What are the landmarks? For the lateral window? For in the lateral window technique, what are the landmarks for the beginners? Sir, you have to go. See, once you, I told you, we cut the, uh, okay, fine. If suppose you have a cervix, we have given incision from 2 o'clock to 10 o'clock position. Okay. You have to absolutely stick to 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock position. Okay. You, con- you cannot go above 1 o'clock and about uh, 11 o'clock. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Are you getting uh, if If, 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 is, uh, if the beginner is uh, trying to open through the lateral window techniques, he might injure mm-hmm. vessels because the, all the vessels descending cervical, uh, then the bladder pillars, they all come in that lateral window. Sir, no, so, uh, what exactly are the landmarks? No, no. My question is. Uh, the uh, the lateral part of your incision is going to you just have to lift the vaginal wall and the lateral most portion of the area you don't need to cut anything what you need to do is put your scissor inside and open it yes yes understood yes means so we are not that cutting area, that yes. area uh, what the area that i am talking about lateral window does not have any vessels the only bleeding happens if you go on the uterine at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. If you go down, you are going to have bleeding. Hmm. That means if you go to a 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock position, you are going to have bleeding. But in the lateral window, you will never have bleeding because lateral window itself is above the vessel. I, I definitely understood your concern. But this is possible, what you are saying. It is absolutely possible that sometimes the uterine vein or uterine artery might get cut. But you have to be careful not to cut it by identifying it. You just have to enter the scissor inside, open it, see the normal structure, uh, your scar, then cut it. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Or you can raise the hands. I will unmute. Dr. Ajay, can you have any questions? Hello, Ajay. 
Hello, sir. Uh, if, you have, if you have any question, you can ask. Dr. Ajay sir is in season. There is a question somebody has asked, Dr. Lunawat has a question. Next, Lunawat. That uh, if the incision, uh, should that incision is uh, deep, then uh, is it going to cause any uh, fistula? Hello? Hello? Hi, sir. Yes, yes. Somebody has asked in the comment box. See, the you cannot go that deep to cause fistula. Because if you see a patient of previous cesarean section, you can see the, the the distance between the anal verge or the the anal canal and the faucet is very big. We are not talking about the patient who has undergone three four deliveries. The, the in that case the the perineal body is very small. In the patient with the previous cesarean section, if you have seen them, it's a very big space and uh, creating a fistula is going to be absolutely impossible there. You just have to, you just have that. That's what I told you. You have to be at least one one point five centimeter above the anal canal. You cannot go below that because around 0.5 to one centimeter, you are going to have your external anal sphincter on the skin. So you cannot go beyond that. So there is no question of uh, uh, causing fistula. Yes, Okay, any questions? Or else, sir, we can, can we, uh, means, um, have these questions on WhatsApp also? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so we can continue our questions and answering so on WhatsApp also. So, Dr. Shailendra? Hi, yes, madam. Ah, so we can conclude the session what? and yeah, 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 we can. take uh, the yes. question and answers in the group. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, sir, yes. I will request oh. you that uh, if it is possible, you can uh, means, uh, uh, share the uh, your videos of previous uh, caesarean sections. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm requesting you please put your videos. Uh, because in here some, we found some problem uh, during uh, means, uh, network issues are there. So ah. properly uh, videos we can't see. So uh, no if it is, uh -huh. I will definitely share. Okay. Yes. And I think we will come uh, live for the vaginal hysterectomy, as you said. Yes, 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 yes. absolutely. Absolutely. We can yes. do that. Yeah. So we will plan some, some sessions like that so that we can directly uh, connect with the live uh, sessions. It will be. So I think people will enjoy uh, that sessions also. Uh, so we okay. will arrange a few episodes of surgicals. Likewise. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so can I conclude, madam? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, thank you, Gulani, sir. Absolutely, uh, your knowledge, your surgical skills are unquestionable. Especially uh, speaking for myself, I have learned many things. Dr. Shailendra, your voice is uh, not... Uh... You are not audible. Okay, I, I am inside the OT. That's why uh, that, that may be the problem. Uh, but uh, thank you, Gulani, sir. In next, and I am going to. Uh, I am very happy that you are with us. Uh, so thank you very much. It's a golden opportunity for us to learn the surgical skills from a uh, such a person who is a legend in that uh, OBGYN skills. So uh, I especially thank Dr. Pawan Gulane, sir, for being with us from uh, so many uh, days. And he is uh, conducting such a wonderful webinar for us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, listening to me. And all of you, like uh, we al already had, I think, 22 uh, participants. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah.